So today I want to share with you guys eight things that I learned from my D1 year and I think they can be very beneficial to you wherever you are on your journey. So keep watching. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Deverne Holloway and I'm super happy that you dropped by today. I'm super excited to share with you some awesome information and news. Yes. So the first thing I want to share with you, drum roll please. Yes, you didn't guess it. I officially a D2. Yeah. A D2. Everybody put your hands in the air. If you are graduating this year, congratulations. That is an amazing accomplishment and I cannot wait to be in your place. So I know it sucks that we're in quarantine, but nevertheless, you've accomplished this and you're amazing. So the first thing that I learned from my D1 year is how to be flexible. Like many of you, if you haven't started dental school yet or you're considering dental school or any career that you are embarking on or whatever you're doing, it's always good to be prepared. I had my plans as to what my schedule will be like, what my exercise schedule is going to be like, what my sleeping schedule is going to be like, and I wanted to be as prepared as possible because I wanted to do my very best, which makes sense. But as I learned very early on, hmm, that things don't always go as planned. So my first semester, the first couple weeks were not as hard as I expected. Our tests weren't for a bit. Given the fact that they were so far away, I, you know, kind of took some time to get to know my friends, which is very important. And I got off my little schedule there. And so when it came to test period, I was a little bit in the scramble mood. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, but what I definitely learned from that is being flexible. When you go into a new situation, always go prepared. I 100% support that, but also be aware that you might have to make some adjustments along the road and that is absolutely okay. You just need to keep rolling with the punches. Number two is stay true to what works for you. Starting to how you study, how you go about things, how you deal with school is how you deal with school. I'll give my example of my experience when I was studying. Sometimes I'd get discouraged because I am not a note taker. I'm an auditory learner. So I listen to my lectures and listen to them over and that's the way I learn. Some people think I'm crazy, but for me, that's the way I learn. So I do not learn anything from just writing my notes. It's so weird because there's a complete disconnect between my writing things down and what goes on in my brain. It's but that's okay. We just adjust and you do what works for you. So I realized that I like to study alone. I also like to group study, but always after I've had my initial study session and understood the information for myself. So don't feel bad if your friends are all studying together at coffee shops and having lots of fun and you're by yourself at home and it's kind of sad. But if that's what works for you, remember your goal is to accomplish and succeed in dental school because we all want to get those degrees and do well in school. Keep doing that. And if it's working for you, good job. Number three. Number three is you are not alone. If you are like me, sometimes you feel that you are alone. You're the only one that has that particular question or you're the only one who sucks at hand skills or you're the only one who doesn't understand anatomy, embryology, neurology, and all the rest of the ologies. You're not alone. Everyone who is in your dental program is smart and that includes you. It doesn't mean just because you don't understand something that you're stupid. You're not stupid. stupid. You are smart and you're absolutely capable of doing this. But that doesn't mean you always understand everything. Maybe the way the teacher explained it wasn't the way that you understand or the way that made sense to you. You have to figure out a different way to be able to understand that information. And I think that's really true intelligence, understanding where you're, you know, where that you know, misconnection is or disconnection and solving it and making that connection so that you can keep moving forward and advancing and doing amazing. If you're someone like me who's not really comfortable maybe raising your hand in class, but reach out to the teacher, reach out to the TAs and get the help or even to your classmates, people you feel comfortable asking and don't feel that it makes you seem dumb. I think educated people ask questions. Ooh. Okay, tip number four is practice, practice, Okay, so I don't know, my violin teacher, no guys, I do not play the violin. I, I'm one of those children that their parents are disappointed in. 
Anyway, I started the violin when I was a little bitty bitty person and my teacher used to say something that has really stuck out to me. He said, practice doesn't make perfect, okay? Practice makes permanent. You wanna make sure you're practicing the right and correct method because that's what will stick, right? So in my D1 year, I realized anatomy was a huge looming cloud over my head. It stressed me out. Our first semester, it was seven credits. Second semester, it was eight credits. You know what I mean, guys? So it was hard. It was a lot, but it was great. I really love to study the human body. So practical, but still hard and difficult and challenging in a good way, but you know, a lot of information. So that's kind of freaked me out and a lot of my classmates, and that's kind of where I wanted to spend all my time so I could do really, really well. But don't forget that as dental students, one unique thing about us is that we have hand skills. I expected to have a hand piece in my hand when I did that. Maybe I'll crop that in, we'll see. Anyway, it is that we have our hand skills to perfect. It's not only about really well the didacting and understanding the theory behind everything that we do, but you also need to be able to do it with your hands. You need to, you know, establish those fine motor hand skills and make sure that you are doing it correctly. Remember, practice makes permanent. So you want practice, 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 but you also want practice the correct thing. Okay, tip number five is invest in healthy friendships. This was something that I actually prayed about before even starting dental school. You really need a good support system. In dental school, it's so such a cherry on top to be honest to have friends that are supportive and you know study buddies all that kind of good stuff well, I really want to emphasize on the healthy because you want people who care about you you want people who really want your success and you to do well you want someone who's not trying to kind of step on you in order to get ahead you want to support each other and I will say that in my D1 year and I am super happy to say that I have an amazing girl gang guys I'm so gra gr 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 grest. I was gonna say grest because grateful and blessed grest that's a new word you guys grest you can copy it's okay I'll let you have it really fortunate to have my friend. I'm gonna put some pictures here, 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 and here of some of the cool things that we did together. And I'm not saying I don't have guy friends. I totally have guy friends and they're awesome. But my girl gang is strong, you guys. Like, so strong. I really, really love these girls. They're amazing. And the awesome thing is that we kind of made this pact together that we would support each other, make sure that everybody stays in the same class and nobody has to repeat. And we stay together and we graduate together because these are gonna be my future colleagues, coworkers, who knows? Number six, take time for yourself and your family. I have an amazing husband and he has an amazing support system to me and it's really awesome because he's also been down this type of road before. He finished medical school. He's currently in his residency, almost finished graduates in June, super excited. I'm really privileged to be able to have a partner and who's someone who understands what I'm going through. Not really had the issue that I know some people have in order to adjust with their spouse or someone who doesn't really understand the rigor and the demands that, you know, a program like dental school demands of you. And so sometimes it can cause some tension. And I just wanna encourage you guys to have those conversations and find ways and creative ways to make time for each other because relationships are so important, you guys. Um, I definitely feel like I took the time um, maybe maybe to the detriment of maybe some of my grades but at the end of the day the things that are really important to me are is my family my husband and my my extended and my immediate and extended family and I think that people are more important number seven is prioritizing your health and wellness a lot of us when we come into a program like this we're in dental school you're in medical school you're in nursing school whatever school you're in and you feel really accomplished and you feel like you know i'm the top of my you know i'm the top one percent you know what i mean as a result you feel like you're self-sufficient you don't need anybody's help you can do this all by yourself and oftentimes we kind of easily hit rock bottom because we realize that we do need help we do need the support we do need to check in need to make sure that we're keeping up with being healthy sleeping and all those different things and so i just want to encourage you guys to use your resources out there and seek help that's pretty much what i'm saying and last but not least and most important of all to me is number eight 
spend time with Jesus. For me, that was one of the main things that really kept me afloat. This is something that carried me throughout my entire D1 year, you guys. I love spending my time in devotions in the morning in my wonderful little TP right here. And I just love to cuddle up with my blanket and my Bible and just seek the Lord in prayer and read his word. That has been the source of my strength. That is what has gotten me through each of those anatomy exams. Oh my gosh. And God has gotten me over hurdle after over hurdle. And each one I give him praise because give me the strength to keep stay awake to keep pushing even when I'm really discouraged and I just want to encourage you guys to make sure to take that time and spend time in the word this is not your thing that's okay but if you are interested and want to get to know the Lord I encourage you he loves you and he wants to get to know you too and so I encourage you to seek the Lord in the mornings and the evenings whenever you get a chance there you have it guys those are the eight tips I want to share with you guys that I learned from my D1 years and I hope that they are helpful to you, whatever your journey may be. And if you really, really liked it, you know what to do. Give this video a thumbs up, which is a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you need to go ahead and go ahead down there, click the button, wherever it is, click it in, it's there, and subscribe, please. I would love to have you join the family. And as always, I will see you in my next video. Be blessed. Or you need to like it.